I'm really excited right now because we have Upsaw What's here. Up? Thanks for having me. In this spot today, I feel like she's one of the coolest artists right now. Oh, so we're going to get into her story. And let's start with like age four or five when you started playing piano and guitar. Yeah. How did you decide? I like, I mean, it never was really a decision. It sounds so cheesy, but it was always just like the biggest part of who I was was music. I think because like my dad was in punk bands throughout my childhood. So I was always watching him and like he would have like band practice at the house or whatever. And I was like, I want to do that. Like that looks fun. And um, just having like instruments around the house. Like I just naturally started gravitating towards guitar and piano and yeah, I guess it just kind of like snowballed from there. Wait, can you tell me about your dad's punk band? That's kind of wild. The one that he was in when I was a kid was called Mandingo. And he like toured and stuff when I was a kid. And I just remember like watching him. I would go to like some of the shows, the ones that were like not at bars or whatever. Because I was like a literal child. Um, and I would just watch him on stage and be like, he's a fucking rock star. Like, I'm going to do that one day. Yeah, it was really cool. The, shout out, what is it? Shout name? out Mike Upsaw, fucking what? legend. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. So that's where you get like your kind of like rock flair from, would you say? Definitely, yeah. I think like just the type of chords I was learning like from him as a kid, like just the taste that he had, I think definitely like rubbed off on me and like the music that I kind of naturally started gravitating towards. Yeah, so I feel like it makes it fun for me because I feel like because like punk and rock is so like heavily ingrained into like who I am yeah. as a musician like I can kind of go into the studio and make like whatever genre I want like my next song is like a house record but I'm like oh I trust that like the rock what? influence like will like sneak its way in regardless you know it's really fun wait how did you a house record <laughs> yeah it's low-key like dancey as fuck I'm really excited yeah what how did you can you give us like a an insider scoop how did that come about like what I mean I think like my whole goal for this year and like putting out music, I'm working on a project called the Phoenix Tapes, which is going to be like a mixtape and the whole Shout like, Phoenix. yeah, you have to, um, the whole point of it was like, I wanted it to feel like how I felt when I was making music as a kid, like back in Phoenix, which I had no idea what I was doing, obviously, and like didn't know what genre I was going to do. And so I wanted that genre list type of vibe to be my entire life for this next year and this next project so like every day i go into the studio i'm like we're gonna do a piano ballad we're gonna do a house record we're gonna do nice. a super rock song a punk song like i'm kind of just going all over the place which has been like so much fun i've never i feel like as an artist we always like naturally try to put ourselves in boxes of like this is who i am and like my goal for this year is to just like not have a genre not put myself in a box it's been really fun that's like, that's pretty cool because I feel like I've been told before, like I have a friend, I had this conversation the other day mm -hmm. and he was like, yeah, I really want to do, he's a rapper and he's like, but I also have been dabbling with like this kind of indie, like drum loop sort of rock cool. kind of thing. And he's like, I don't know if I should start a new name for this project. How are you feeling about kind of, you know, dabbling with all these different genres? It feels just like... Because as a music listener, we were talking about this before, like, I kind of just listen to, like, all types of music. Like, nothing is really, like, off the table for me. And so I'm like, why, if I love all types of genres, all types of music, like, why can't I just make all of those, too? Okay, what about the Arizona School of Art? Uh oh let's go. That probably was, like, a real, like, moment for you to kind of just be around like-minded people. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, I started going to Arizona School for the Arts, which is like a performing arts school in Phoenix. Um, when I was like 10, my parents put me in the school, and it's like a 5th through 12th grade. So like, I started when I was 10, graduated high school with like the same group of like 90 kids who just like grew up together. Um, and yeah, it was cool. What's the scene like in Arizona? Like, is there like a music scene? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was playing shows from the time I was like 13 until I moved here. Um, and getting to play with like a bunch of, a lot of the artists there that like I looked up to and got to play shows with a lot were like alternative rock artists. And so like, yeah, I would just kind of like open for whoever I could. I'm thinking cause you are going on tour soon. Yes. In a few days. She's also going on tour in September. So yeah. cop your tickets. Yes. But like, did you ever have like stage rate, like performing? No, which Never? is so weird. No, like I think like as a kid, 
even before I started like doing music as my like career, any chance like I was that bitch like trying to play every school talent show. Like any chance I could just like wow. get in front of people, I was like, give me attention. I want to just fucking sing. Like that was. I just like craved it constantly and I think that's why now I feel so lucky to be touring so much is like once I started to to get on the road I realized like I would just like pack my life up into a suitcase and tour 365 like I would tour like the whole year if I could but yeah it's really really fun and very addicting for sure what kind of like tour artist are you are you like the wild one <laughs> like after a show where are you at are you outside? I, well, this is my problem. It's not a problem. It's just a, a character arc. When I started touring, I was like, I have to be a rock star. Like, we're raging every night. Oh, Tequila snap. shots. Tequila let's shots. Go. Oh, no. Yeah. So, like, that was kind of my tour vibe originally. And then I realized, like, obviously that is not sustainable. Yeah. And then I didn't really hit until, like, I went on my headlining tour at the end of last year. I was like, oh, like... People are buying tickets to see, like, our show. Like, I want to be the best version of myself for the show. Like, because at the end of the day, like, the show isn't even about, like, us on stage. It's about, like, the experience out there. So it's, like, you got to put on the best possible experience for everyone who's, like, showing up for you. And so I'm, like, super lame now and, like, do sober tours, which is <gasps> so sad. Really? But I just feel so, like, in my body and so, like, present. It's been really, honestly, like, life-changing on the road. It's been really fun. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Me too. I'm like, no tequila shots before That's we go on. Like respect, though. Yeah, respect. it's it's fun. It makes you like. I just feel like I remember every single show, and I can like take in like all of it. It's so much fun. Also, if you don't already know, um, Taylor is a sick writer. Ooh. Um, not just for her own project, but she's she's written some really cool stuff for people like Dua Lipa, yeah, um, Madison Beer. So tell us about kind of like getting into, you know, writing for other artists and kind of like how do you separate the two between your project mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, the Taylor that goes in for your project when you're in the studio and then Taylor that goes in for, you know, a Dua Lipa record, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Honestly, it kind of happened by accident. Like, I've always been a writer, obviously, for yes. myself. But, like, I was writing a bunch of songs in like sessions every day basically and like you know how it goes like most of the songs don't even come out like they just end up on like a dropbox folder or whatever and like if you have like a publisher or a team they're normally like pitching your songs around to other artists who take outside songs and so i had this song called good in bed that i originally like wrote for me with um melanie and lynn grant the producer and writer and um, we had the song for like months and then one day I got an email from Lindgren saying like, yo, Dua Lipa heard this song and wants to like put it on her album. And I was like, spam, this is fake, like no fucking spam. Name. Yeah, <laughs> and spam. Spam. it was real. And yeah, I think when that happened, I was like, oh, cool. Like it kind of accidentally like opened the door for writing for other artists. And then, yeah, I started to just get in the room with other artists and like help tell their stories. and. It's been really fun. It's cool for me, too, because, like, when I'm writing for myself, I'm in, like, overthinking mode, like, constantly. Like, is this right for me? Like, whatever. And when I'm writing for other artists, like, that's their job to be, like, the emotional influence of it. And then, like, our job as writers is to, like, help them get their story across. So, like, it's definitely, like, different parts of my my brain, I guess, which is really fun. That's wild. Yeah. What about the A side? Ooh, good A girl side era. of that. Yes. Yeah. Because... We all, we all <laughs> want to be good girls, but sometimes it doesn't can't work. do that. Yes. <laughs> I, <laughs> true. I wrote that, yeah, ex basically what you said. Like, I really thought I was going to, like, get my shit together at the start of this year. I was like, I'm done being chaotic. Like, I'm done messing my life up just to write good <laughs> songs about it. I'm going to get my life together. And turns out, like, that was so boring. And so I wrote a song about that instead. And then left my good girl era, I feel like. Yeah. I think one of the lines in that track that I really loved, <laughs> she, she said, is this, the, is this the line she said, leave a bad boy on red or something like oh, that? Oh, yeah, left the bad boys on red. Yes. <laughs> so good. <laughs> she said, so good. Inspirational. <laughs> Just kidding. Is that, what, is that what you do? Like, I mean, sometimes there's nothing to say in the conversation. Yeah, you know? I feel like... 
the whole the place I was in when I wrote Good Girl Era was very much like anything toxic in my life, you're cut. And so, yeah, all the bad boys were left on red. I'm dead for sure. Is that your type? Is, like is it? I wish it wasn't. I feel like as I'm growing older, I'm realizing like that's not the vibe. I feel like as human beings, we like glamorize like people who are totally gonna fuck us up, and that's not sustainable, you know. So I think. Yeah, Good Girl Era was definitely about me trying to to ditch all of that toxicity for sure. Oh man, <laughs> you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can relate. Yeah, we can yeah. relate to that track. Big mood. What? Yeah. Okay, let's go a little bit backwards for a second. Yeah. How I kind of started listening to you was Young Life Crisis. Yeah, crazy. Which, check that out. Yeah, it's a fire, like, I think it's like a four track. Five, four, track. four or five. Yeah, a little EP. Yeah, yeah, tell us about making that one, because I feel like that was, like, you've released music prior, but that felt like a real introduction to the inside of your brain, like, cool. as, like, a whole body of work. So, can you tell us about the making of that? Yeah, I wrote Young Life Crisis during 2020, like, while yes. the world was falling apart, and I feel like all of us had an internal life crisis no matter what age we were at and um i lost i mean everyone kind of lost their fucking minds during that time and so i just kind of did as many zoom sessions as i could because you couldn't get in the studio obviously and so i wrote and recorded most of young life crisis like on zoom with the producer writer and then i was just like recording on my little sm7 um what about money on my mind yeah money on my mind that video is kind of like okay oh cinematic hey thank you what was was about the making of that video like yeah how involved are you in the process of like the vision yeah that was with my director who i love george gallardo and um i told them i had just seen fight club for the first time and i was like i want this video to feel like fight club like can there be two versions of me and um i want like it to be green and whatever and then he sort of like wrote the vision from there and that's how we normally work and he just like brings my like little dumb ideas to life another thing is when you walk into the room i mean i couldn't help like your aura oh obviously Love but aura. yo the fit though oh thanks. for real yes, like how does someone dress like upsall oh my God. for real <laughs> make me feel like so where cool. do you start um well my whole vibe I try to, like, during each album, have, like, a mood board for, like, what I'm going to wear because I have, like, no fashion sense. Like, I have a really hard time, like, piecing together shit. I feel like a lot of people do, but I'm, like, the epitome of that. And Even so I, nails, I need, like, press-ons, dude, from Amazon. Love Are it. you serious? Because I have to play guitar, so I can't do, like, actual real nails. Like, I'm going to pop these off later. But, um... That's, that's so, so like fire. bad but um no i decided like for this whole era i wanted to just wear like track suits because they're comfy and like because it's a mixtape i don't know something about it just felt very like 90s to me and so yeah only track suits for this era which makes my life so much easier because it looks like i like put in effort but i didn't because it's a fit it's like a fit and then we needed like the white tees because my next I single is called know. wet white t-shirt so like that's the vibe there's a mixtape pulling up yes there is what is What's up with this mixtape? It's called The Phoenix Tapes, and it's gonna be a lot of songs. I'm kind of rolling it out throughout the year. Like, the first two songs, Good Girl Aaron, Condoms, are a part of the mixtape. The next two songs, Wet White T-Shirt, and not announcing the name of the other one yet. But, um, yeah, I'm just gonna be doing, like, two songs at a time for the rest of the year leading into the mixtape, which will be at the end of the year as, like, a big project. Yeah. It's gonna like throw out some cool questions. Ooh, you know, we'll, this is we'll a cute pick, box like, three. too. Okay, we'll, sorry. We'll pick like three, just to, like top this all off. You I know, love it. little randoms from from the the atmosphere or like what do you call it? <laughs> from the ether. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll mix I it up it. for you, and then you can just like. Oh, <laughs> I just pick. Wait, I love this shit. Okay, sorry. You ready? <laughs> Ooh, who would play you in a movie? I've been asked this Whoa. before and I didn't know how to answer. Um, who has red hair? 
Okay, this is like me, my god complex coming into play, but like Angelina Jolie like hit me up. But like that girl is like, she's way hotter than me. But like, yeah, that would be so sick. Could you imagine? Damn. She, she's got the baddie energy. I think like she's who I aspire to be. I'll play her in a movie. Just kidding. Whoa. No, yeah. I could see that. Like if Angelina, like young Angelina were to like oh, so baddie. dye her red. We could kind of do it. I think that's good. Young Angelina Jolie. That's a, That's my what new answer. The... That's oh, good. Right, let's go. <laughs> okay, I honestly don't like, I don't remember half of these, so. Wait, who I'm would play you in a movie? That's a hard question to ask. Who would play Jordan in a movie? Do you have an answer? <laughs> when I was a kid, people used to say I looked like Elijah Wood, but I never saw it. Who was Elijah Wood? Lord of the Rings, the guy from Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay, Slay. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to, th I'll come up with an answer for you. This is good. I'm gonna start asking everyone that. That's great. <laughs> okay. You threw me off that slightly. Britney or Christina? Mm. Oh man. I mean, both are so baddy. I've recently, though, just because of like everything that's been going on, like Britney for life. You Free guys. Britney. I wrote about Britney Spears in a song, actually. She's a legend. What Love do you her. say about Britney? It's like, what's the lyric? Oh, I want to make history like Britney, hey. like Lindsay, son of like Monica Lewinsky. Yeah, so it's about all the baddies. Who's your favorite like Disney girl era? Miley, 100%, really? Hannah Montana, the baddest bitch ever. I feel that. I talk about Miley in that song as well. Yeah, I that era of like growing up, I feel like I had so many cool like young women to look up to who were like always like pushing boundaries for women, just like it's true. Yeah, paving the way for like artists like like me and like everyone else to exist now in like a very freeing space, you know? I just got this vision of like a Miley Upsall collab. Like, I don't know. Don't fuck with me like that. Yup. <laughs> Manifesting every day. No, for real. That would be crazy. Like that, like what's that song, Barracuda or something like that? Isn't there two what girls on there? What did she do? Oh. I feel like one of those like dual. It would be so hot. Kind of like Guitar Hero-esque like era. Mm, hot. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna work on that one day, guys. I manifest that every day. That's like a life goal. Okay. Hell yeah. Okay, last one. Last one. one. Cute. Okay. I want this one to be good, so I wanna I know. Shake we it. need some drama, some tea. <laughs> okay, it literally is not even moving. Love. Okay, <laughs> I'll mix it. All right, wait. Okay. Oh god. <laughs> I'm scared. Cats or dogs? I am a dog person, <laughs> like through and through. I'm about to go get a tattoo, actually, literally after this, uh, for my childhood dog who named Chaka, who just recently passed away. But I'm getting a little Chaka really? tattoo. I'm like a dog person for life, 100%. I'm a cat person. Really? OK, Thanks. cute. Let's fight. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I just like love dogs. Oh my god. Yeah. I actually know. I'm just a dog person like for my childhood dog, for Chaka only, but yeah. Do one more. Do one more. Okay. One more. Okay. One more. Some drama. Okay. We love. Okay. Just the last one of the cards. Oh, easy. Who was your first celebrity crush? <gasps> you guys, I was convinced as a kid that I was going to marry Zac Efron, like, dead ass. Oh! After watching High School Musical, <laughs> I was like, Troy Bolton for life. Really? I mean, like, now he, he looks a little different, but when he was, like, during his, like, heart, teenage heartthrob era, I was like in love like that was like a huge part of my personality which is like so cringe and so embarrassing now but i really was obsessed with that so so kid. you kind of liked the, the the clean cut like isn't what, that like, like yeah good boys yeah which then. is weird but i remember there was this moment where he did it was like zach efron breaking out of his like teeny bopper he did like a rolling stones cover and like he was like shirtless and i was like i'm going to marry this man and I don't, I mean, it, you never, you know what I mean? Yeah, call me up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so funny. It's lit. Yeah. That I was my first know. celebrity crush, for sure. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, you heard it here. Everything. <laughs> yeah, I really, we went in. This we was went good. in. Thank you so much. Thanks for having for me. For pulling up and sharing with us. Thank you. Your this story. So fun. Check her out on tour. She's got that mixtape coming up. We're so excited. And uh, yeah, everybody, this is Upsell.